In everyday life, there are a lot of things we dread. Meeting new people, spiders in your attic, or even your school teacher. It's a scary world out there. And yet, there's something much simpler that always gets my heartbeat going. Sorry. The question, where are you from? I don't know whether to say what my nationalities are, where I was born, where I live, where my parents are from. To be honest, I really never know how to respond. And I'm sure that there are many other people who feel the same unsteadiness when confronted with this question. Of course, I am aware that most people do identify themselves strongly with one nationality. Being proud of your country is a good thing. It's where you know the customs, appropriate behaviors, where you have family, and most importantly, where you feel safe. However, too often, this goes too far and becomes an exclusive feeling. Some will start to feel superior to others as a nation, and others will even avoid meeting someone because of their race or nationality. Now, I'm not here to talk about racism or patriotism, because those topics are far too complex for me to treat in a mere 10 minutes. I'm here to address a simple question, which you might have already have seen, which I feel needs to be addressed more often. How can we drive cultures and nations worldwide to, <laughs> to stay inclusive and come closer together to build a better future? I want to put forward three points to try and answer this. First and foremost, we need to rid ourselves of generalizations and stereotypes. When I lived in Morocco, I learned to feel what it was like to be part of the minority, both ethnically and culturally. Everyone looked different. People around me from part of a different religion, their names sounded strange to me, I didn't understand their language, and they did things like riding motorcycles with two live sheep as cargo. Who does that? It was a culture shock like no other. Before having moved there, I had had a vague idea of what to expect, having heard Moroccans this, Moroccans that, and at first it really did seem that way. And I felt excluded sometimes. Trust me, that's really not a nice feeling. But over time, I adapted. I started to befriend them at school, at the ballet studio, and I even managed to say a few words in Arabic. I realized, as I got to know them better, that they're not so different as a people. It's really only their routines, rituals, and social rules that set them apart from us. In the end, no matter how we look or what we speak, we're all the same. We have the same needs, and we want the same things. All of a sudden, all the generalizations I'd heard didn't make sense anymore. Everyone was kind and helpful in all types of situations. Generalizations may hold true sometimes, but we need to learn to go from Moroccans to Ibrahim, from seeing the big picture down to each and every individual, because everyone is different, has their own personality, and is really worth getting to know. And negative stereotypes especially have to be taken care with. I agree. After living in Asia for two and a half years, that there may be truth in some of them. If my Japanese friend scores really high in her math test, I would say, of course, she's Asian. But when it comes to stereotypes like the Swiss only eat cheese and chocolate, or all Asians can't think outside the box, you have to be careful, because they can be offensive, and most importantly, don't hold true. Things like these is what allow people to make judgments about others before meeting them. We cannot let generalizations and stereotypes to unjustly define the world around us. Because there's so much that we would miss out on if it weren't for learning from another point of view, a different life experience, or cultural heritage. The second point that plays an important role is the idea of respect. This is something that we are taught to have from a very young age on towards all the people around us, parents, teachers, and friends, and yet, Somehow this rule, respecting other people's beliefs and ideas, sometimes disappears when a person of a different race or culture stands in front of us. This should not be the case. We have to learn to adjust our views and opinions and accept that other people have different ones. We need to 
be open and active listeners rather than lock ourselves in and be ignorant towards other people's cultures. We need to make people be curious, listen, and learn. However, to help this happen, there needs to be a fair share of resources around the world. If we want everyone in this world to accept each other, no one should be in, be in a state of need. For example, for expats like me, it's quite easy to respect different cultures since we have everything. On the other hand, this is more helpful for, say, more, more, um, this is harder for, say, poor societies in Asia because they feel threatened by the rich Western civilization. We're taking away their land, using them for cheap labor, and putting them in the lowest rank of social hierarchy. Or if people in rural South America suffer from hunger, it will be harder for them to view other individuals who have everything as equal. And this really only highlights another reason for why it is so important to help people in need, be it whole countries or single refugees. Of course, I am aware we cannot change the world overnight. I'm not asking for that. But we do need to know what we want to be working towards and what our aim is. Last but not least, and probably the easiest, is that I want to encourage you to meet and get to know new people. Now, I'm not asking you to go up to the first stranger you see on the street once you exit this hall and greet them because apparently I told you so. No, I'm talking more broadly. If we have lived in the same city for our whole lives, we have a certain group of friends whom we tend to hang out with every Friday. We might know each other from school or work, and we always focus on a particular group of people. And that's completely okay. But sometimes this habit of sticking to groups can create divisions, which doesn't really contribute to the point I'm trying to get across. It would be much better if cultures and cities are mixed so that from a young age on, you get to know people from all around the world with a different cultural heritage to yours, which can help prevent barriers from arising in the future between culturally different groups. This seems to work in the following example. Singapore, a small city-state in Southeast Asia that has many different ethnic groups living together on a mere island, and it is one of the most modern and advanced cities in the world. Why? Because people, students, and parents and teachers, they get used to the cultural mix at home and at school. The government has strict rules for regulating who can live in the HDBs or high density buildings, which are subsidized and cheap housing for local Singaporean families. There are rules to regulate how many Chinese, Malay, Indians, and Indonesians can live together in one building. This is so that ghettos aren't built up and the different cultures stay mixed. What I'm trying to show with this example is that it works. If everyone grows up knowing people from all around the world, there will be less misunderstandings and more tolerance for different cultures. And even if you're not in Singapore, you can do this in your own surroundings. If someone new moves into your community, school, work, or wherever it is that you spend your day, greet them, welcome them, and get to know them no matter where they are from. After having talked so long, you may have already forgotten why I'm here, what my point is, or what I'm really trying to say. Well, it's quite simple. Everything starts small and is slowly built up like puzzle pieces to create a bigger and better picture. Just remember this. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and try to get no new people. Be it from your own community, outside, or even someone far away online. If we all share ideas, listen to each other, and try to create new relations, we can aim towards a better, more sustainable future with less wars and more peace. And the small changes you make are as important because it is the exclusion or inclusion that makes a difference for individual lives to be worth living. Thank you.